Form Next 2022 and the promise of the most nerdy conversation. Is that right? I hope so, yeah. This is my friend Zevier, and we are at AI Build. Now, Zevier, could you let the audience know real quick in a couple sentences, what is AI Build and why is AI Build? AI Build is an industrial slicing platform. It's much more advanced than the types of platforms you use for desktop 3D printing, you know, the Curas of the world. And we integrate in particular with six axis robots so we can print really big things. It's, it's funny because AI Build as a platform, it's funny you call it a slicer and calling it a slicer felt like it didn't give the proper gravitas, right? I think platform is the word we'd like to emphasize. Absolutely, platform. But in that platform is something that I know that you're super nerdy about. And what I'm really excited to dive into is defect detection. Oh my gosh. What is defect detection? You know, 3D printing, there's this big vision for building big things, you know, printing exp expensive metals. But if you don't get it right the first time, you have a lot of waste. Throwing away an object like this when you get to large format <laughs> is uh, really harmful for the environment and a huge cost. So defect detection, you know, you've probably heard of it in things like spaghetti detective, uh, oh, absolutely. things like that, right? Okay. Um, but we're trying to do that in an industrial way. And that means detecting it with really high confidence immediately. For some of these parts in industrial settings, you can't have any defects. Right. You can't have even a little divot. You know, you're making a mold of it. It can't have, a, you know, under extrusion for one second. Right. Well, that's that's what's sort of blowing my mind because we're talking about defect detection. And I, at the industrial level, if an object has certain properties that it needs to adhere to, then that tiny nick in the metal or in whatever material you're making, like, ruins it. It's almost like precognition, right? That minority report. This is the minority report of 3D printing. So you're trying to detect it before it happens? The best remedy for defects in 3D printing is prevention. So the first okay. thing, right, is a perfect toolpath. And when you're doing toolpath, you know, in planar, which everyone's used to, just layer by layer. <laughs> right. That's one thing, but we're doing, you know, non-planar defects. We're also trying to detect all these types of things. Well, like you said, with the robots, the six axis machines. With the six axis robots, yeah. they enable a lot of different kinds of capabilities. So we're trying to first make perfect tool paths. That's the first thing. Okay. Then we're trying to prevent them uh, by doing other types of simulations. So we do thermal simulation for our parts. So we know how fast to go, depending on the geometry of the previous layer temperature below it. With small prints, when there's a problem, rarely have a print that just falls in on itself. These things are so thermically dense that they just fall under their own weight if you don't give them enough time to cool between them before the next layer. Oh, because everything is still almost mushy. molten and it mushy, is, right? Absolutely, it takes a long time for them to cool. Large format, uh, we also do thermal simulation. So we actually take your whole thing that you sliced and then do a thermal simulation and then modify it. Like you don't have to think about it. So we know where to slow down, where to speed up literally on segment by segment of the tool belt. So defect detection is that when prevention has failed, okay, when that hasn't gone well. Wait, meaning what? Meaning that we got a, the tool path that we expect to be perfect. We've done as much as we can beforehand. Okay. But then uh, a little piece of metal gets into your nozzle. So that's a type of defect where there's nothing you could do ahead of time. Like it's like, you know, a, act to God. Yeah, but you're talking about detecting those as well? Any, so anything that can result in a defect we don't care about, we don't care how it happens. We just care that it happens. Okay. So one of the things we've done and that I've been working on and my team for the past year is defect detection right at the nozzle. So one thing that we get as an advantage for large format is we can put cameras just a couple inches from the nozzle end. Okay. And, and that means that we have like a really up close and personal vision of how the plastic is coming out of the extruder, which means that we can see it much faster than if you have far away vision, right? Where you're waiting right. for the defect to become an inch long before your defect detection can notice it. So we're trying to notice it immediately as it exits the nozzle. At the software level, then you have an exact vision of what it should look like yes. at every millimeter of extrusion. Absolutely, yes. And in fact, you know, defect detection is more complicated than just putting together a computer vision model that looks for when there's no extrusion. Sometimes there's no extrusion on purpose when you're doing a travel. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, oh, right? Yeah. So you don't okay. wanna be like alert, there's no material coming out, but because we are connected to your robot, we know it's a travel. So we know uh, there's no problem right okay. now. Okay. So that's the other part where AI build really connects the circuits together is that we're so integrated with the 3D printing system that we know exactly what should be happening. Not we don't just deliver a toolpath and a G code, you know, and press play. 
we're watching and waiting for certain things to happen so we know, hey, extrusion just changed. It's not under extruding by accident, it's under extruding on purpose. So okay. we've done two things basically. This is fascinating because like you said, spaghetti detective and um, having, having the ability to see prints, you know, oh, we've detected a mass failure, right. you know, go ahead and stop yeah. it, right? On Half the consumer your side. just became spaghetti. Right, right. You've, got, you've got 200 grams of spaghetti and it's like, okay, I've detected yeah. spaghetti and I'm gonna stop it. So de uh, defect detection at the consumer level is essentially whether or not failure has occurred. Yes, yeah. Right? And like you're saying, at the industrial level, you can't do that. But this is, this is blowing my mind at, yeah. at how integrated AI build is within the process in order to make it happen. So then there's there's confidence there that AI build is providing for the for the operator. What we're trying to do for the industry is make it so that not every 3D printing company has to hire a data science AI team. We're trying to provide a base level where, you know, if you have cameras and you connect with our software, we have a model to run for you already so we can offer defect detection. Oh, 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 I see what's going on. So then you are bringing industrial defect detection to a just click print sort of mentality. We're trying to make it that, you know, co companies want to make some part 3D printed, but you know, there's so much knowledge that goes into like even get, you know, think about how hard it is to get your Cura slicings correct for a new printer. Oh yeah, I, <laughs> okay. Think sure. about that with six axes. And you know, uh, in our filament extruders we have at our lab, there are four filaments going in. It's just, and then there's heat and it's large format, you know, 0.4 millimeter nozzles. I don't print with less than four millimeter nozzles. So just the, the explosions. Good flex, bro. <laughs> yeah, right. The explosions that happen are really a big problem. So no, we're trying to make it so that like that part, which is so much more important in large format printing than small, is something that the people who use AI Sync to print don't have to worry about that things going wrong part quite as much. I have experience in this. So I used to have a 3D platform machine a big, large format machine in my garage, and I had a two millimeter nozzle on it, Yep. and I attempted to print some PLA, and I couldn't get it to not warp. And it's because of that thermal mass. I, yeah. there, was, there was no way oh, yeah. to cool it down fast enough. And that was just me in my garage with a two, two millimeter nozzle. Now, if we're talking, your smallest is four, and we're dealing with materials that aren't just PLA, Oh, uh, just to be clear, our engineers regularly have to literally print little screw holes to screw down the prints into the bed. <laughs> because the stress is, the stress in small parts, it'll just war, it'll lift up a little bit. These will crack in half. Literally, if the, part, if the part is not designed such a way to account for those stresses, it'll crack in half. And so, uh, you know, also noticing, you know, when you're only 10% up of the print, by the way, we think it's going to crack. No need to print 90% 10 kilos of material to find yeah. out, we're trying to make it so it's not as wasteful to 3D print, um, that it unlocks a lot more possibilities, both from this geometric perspective, but also that people have confidence that a, a print went well. Hey, at the end of your part, you know, we didn't detect any defects and we were looking at the nozzle. So in uh, path generation, I know on the, the powder bed side, they do take into account the, the, the material and the laser and the width of the laser and how much heat is mm -hmm. there and how close parts can be. And so this feels like that, but on the FFF side, multi-axis for like crazy materials, right? Uh, by the way, we're doing that next. <laughs> of we course just, you we are. Just, we just earned a major grant from uh, UK government uh, to, uh, we're partnering with a company called Domin that prints, uh, it's actually one of the only times I've seen 3D printed parts as end use products. They print these valves and they print it, that goes into industrial use. So we're working with them to try and automatically detect the same types of defects in powder beds. So we're really trying to go everywhere. Does the model, like is it, is it a separate model that you have to train or is it a? So uh, that's another thing that we're trying to make so others don't have to think about is you need, we, prop, we don't know exactly how many models we will need. It's probably not one size fits all, but it might be one per material. It might be one per material times how complicated the geometry is. The camera will matter also. The nozzle camera is not the same thing as our static. So we have multiple models actually on this screen. You can see some of that, but we're trying to cover all the bases. The science behind this is fascinating because you're essentially, you're attempting to mimic a one-to-one -one real world version, but digitally. This is, you know, digital sw twin on steroids. Dig yeah, digital twin. Yeah. I've heard that term, but this is way beyond that. It's, it's well, it's making digital twin physically useful. 
right? It's that, what's the purpose of having a digital twin of what you're about to print? It's that, so we can compare. We can see when something was off by a really small amount for a part that really matters. Right, small, when we're talking small, millimeters. I mean, the, the, the nozzle cameras that we've deployed, and also I wanna mention, it's not just one. The camera system we have in our lab where our test has up to nine cameras recording simultaneously. The same print, okay? <laughs> Including infrared cameras. Really? Yes. What does that offer you? There are some really amazing uh, things that IR cameras offer that standard cameras don't. So the where is a defect gonna happen when you're printing? At the nozzle, right? Like, the, like most, okay. most defects, sure. a lot of defects. Sure. And what's the hottest part of the plastic coming out of the nozzle? Well, it's, it's or the hottest part of the plastic, I mean, is what's coming out of the novel. Right. So with an infrared camera, you kind of have it like color code painted the most important part to pay attention to. Oh, so if, if, if there's a defect that passes through, then that infrared camera will, will see a change in the thermal pattern. Exactly, yeah. Oh. In fact, in, in, to a regular camera, this looks like one color or, you know, whites and grays. Yeah. But to an infrared camera where this is just being printed, you get automatic, you know, much higher better view of like what's going on with your print. So for stresses, that's a really important thing. How your oh. part cools actually affects how the part deforms. So we're doing, so nine cameras simultaneously, you know, it's, it's, it's not like a high school project. Like there are some really great things in a Raspberry Pi. You get one camera, you can get a defect model going really well. We also need our cameras to be synchronized. They have to literally see, you know, the same frame at the same time. In the order same to, frame, the same frame at the same time. That's our goal. That's really what we're aiming for. Um, so it's, it's, it's so it cool. gets really nerdy. I mean, we've tried, you know, eight different camera models. We've tried different camera protocols, different edge AI systems, all to find out for our customers, like what's the best way to do it. This has been amazing because the being able to, to nerd out at such a level, right? It, it's just, this is amazing. So uh, Xavier, if you could like, I'm sure my audience here is going to be incredibly interested to learn more about this. Is there somewhere you could tell them to go to find out? Uh, yeah, so uh, AIbuild.com uh, has a lot of information. Uh, there's been a lot of things going on in the news recently. Uh, KUKA just announced, uh, KUKA the robot company. The robot company, Just yeah. announced <laughs> yesterday um, that they're uh, going to be making these uh, robotic cells, additive manufacturing cells. So that's a robot inside a box, all kind of plug and play, and we're their recommended software solution. So that will make it also, <laughs> thanks. That'll make it much easier also for anyone who wants to get into robotic systems to like not have to figure everything out from scratch. So the news, there's a lot of things happening with AI Build. We're really excited about it. So I could just go to KUKA and order a robot in a box and it would show up at my house and I could, <laughs> and I could just hand it a model of something and your software would just make sure it would complete. We'll, we'll skip the details and say yes. Yeah, basically. I mean, that's the that's the real vision, right? And uh, you know, all the work that's been going into desktop 3D printing for the past, who knows, 10, 15 years, the, the, the thinking that's been going to large format robots has been not that long. So there's so much road ahead to get better. And, and, and you know, we're trying to do that. Uh, you know, the company's been around for about five years uh, and we're hoping that more people get into the six axis printing space so that we can see what else can be made. This is exciting, man. Hey, I really appreciate the chat. Thanks for coming by. Have a good rest of Form Next, man. Thank you so much.